Hi, it's Jennifer with Jennifer at Home. I'm so happy you're here today to join me on this decluttering toys video. Well, you may be wondering why I'm making a video about decluttering toys when my children are grown adults. Well, let me tell you, I have so many friends with younger children and they just have toys everywhere and they're just overwhelmed by all of the toys and all of the mess and they just really aren't sure what to do about it. Well, I've dealt with so many toys in my own house over the years and looking back now, I can clearly see some easy solutions to deal with all of those toys. Unfortunately, it was a little late for me, but maybe I can help somebody else by suggesting some things that I think would be great to consider when dealing with all of the toys. I think part of the reason that we have so many toys in our homes is that we're all really busy and we think that our kids could have all of these toys to entertain them and to have fun with. And frankly, it is actually a lot of fun for us as parents to go and buy all of these toys. When we go out shopping, especially before Christmas, and we want to get toys or have toys for Santa to bring and things that we think our kids would be excited about, it's actually fun for us to see all of the new things, things we didn't have when we were younger and all of the creative designs and different things they've come out with. All of the different Barbie toys are always so much fun to find and and go through. All of the Hot Wheel cars and everything that we might have liked to have when we were kids now are available that we could actually purchase for our own children. And that makes it so much fun. So we have a connection with these toys as parents in the stores even before we bring them home. Just picking out things for our kids that we want to give them a very special gift and we want to buy it and we put it in. We actually physically hold it and pick it up and decide what to get and we put it in the shopping cart and drive that shopping cart around the store and we have a connection. We take these things to the register. We physically buy them, pay for them, put them in our car. We take them home and wrap them up and we have an actual connection with these toys before our children even have ever seen them. So I think that's why it's so hard for us as parents to part with these toys because we go get them and do all of that. And then we, we want to see the excitement on our children's faces on Christmas or even on their birthdays when they open these toys. And it, it co connects. We have a bond with these toys and these things that we get before our children even get to play with them. So I think that's why when they're laying around the house and they're all over the place, that we find it really hard as parents to part with those things because we think that these are special things that we have gifted our children. And the cho our children may not even have a connection with these items because they didn't pick them or, or choose them. We bought these things for them. So when we're telling our children, hey, you need to clean up your room. Go clean your room. Pick up your toys. Unfortunately, our children don't always have the skills to pick up their things and know where to put them. A lot of these toys and things have so many different pieces and parts. And when they're all out on the floor or all over the room, it really becomes overwhelming for our children. And I didn't really realize this for so many years. It, it just now looking back, I can just now see it that when I told my children, go clean your room, go clean your room. You need to clean your room, go clean your room before dinner. It just really, they just really don't know what to do with all of these things. So eventually that, you know, you tell them, you know, put everything in the toy box. Well, the toy box is full. So then you say, pick up everything else. There isn't anywhere to put it. They push it under the bed or into the closet and that's the best they can do. They need instruction and guidance when, picking up these things because they need to be sorted. All the little pieces and parts can be lost together. So uh, I really think that we need to go through when and show them. But as parents, sometimes we're really overwhelmed and we don't have time to stop and pick up and clean up all these toys and parts and pieces. So I think the best solution to do is, well, number one, not buy as many toys. Kids really enjoy just doing things with, with their parents and with their family. Maybe having game night or doing things, playing in the yard or playing ball or soccer or 
things like that. Family time is the most important things for kids. And I look back now and my kids, their favorite memories are us having family game nights or doing things together, craft projects, painting, playing ball in the yard, playing it with the water hose. All of those things are their very favorite memories. Their favorite memories are not playing with all of the toys in a big pile. So I, first of all, I would suggest keeping all of the games put up high on the shelf where only your, only the parents can reach them. When kids have games and all the little things that come with all the games, the little tiny pieces and the markers and the dice, all of those things can get lost so easily amongst all of the other toys. And then you can't play the game. You can't get it out and play it because the pieces are lost. And the same with puzzles, of course. I have a friend and she got her daughter a great big Barbie dream house for Christmas one year because she wanted her daughter to have a great big gift to come downstairs to on Christmas morning. And her daughter never, ever played with the Barbie dream house. But she bought her daughter a little puzzle and a little craft set, a little paint by number set, which is basically just a little cardboard picture and with some little paints. And her daughter loved those things. Those were the things she loved most. And the mo thing she loved most about the puzzle was that the fact that her and her mother could do that together. They built the little puzzle over and over again. And so we don't really need great big giant gifts to have our children excited. What really is exciting to them most of all are things that we do with them, time that we spend with them. Quality time is the best thing. And so they just really don't need all of these great big toys. And it really is the sad part about it. All of these toys really overwhelm our children. It just becomes a big mess in their room or in their playroom. And when they have these things everywhere, they can't really sit down and play with one or two things. When they go in the room and they see things everywhere, they don't even know where to begin or where to start, especially when we tell them to clean it up. So these are some of the important things I just really wanted to bring up today and point out. And hopefully this will be very helpful for you. And another great thing I would suggest is to take all of the extra toys that they aren't playing with and put them aside. Put them in some totes and mark them or in some cardboard boxes and mark them for different age groups. If your children have outgrown some of the toys, the baby toys, and you don't need baby toys in your house anymore, maybe pick out just one or two of the most very special ones, maybe a special stuffed animal, things they may not play with now, or just another special toy, and put those aside. Put them in a tote or a box and mark, um, keep baby toys. And those can be the special ones that you're keeping. And the all of the other toys, maybe put those in a box and label it as, um, the age group baby toys no longer played with and just leave them in that group. Set that box aside or the tote and put it in a place where you're not seeing it all the time in the garage or in a closet. And later on down the road, if your children have not asked for those things or wanted to get in, you know, ask you what happened to the, so those certain things and they just weren't really favorite toys to begin with, then maybe it's time to pass those on to someone else that can really use them and enjoy them or take them to the donation center. But you can keep aside the couple special toys that your child really, really liked, and you can keep those put away for when they get older. And you can do that with each consecutive age group all the way up through adulthood. When my children were adults and moved out of the house and were out on their own, it was a little difficult for me to part with these special, the, the toys in the special box that I kept, the toys that were their very favorites along the way. And I had several things for each of them. I narrowed it down over the years. It was really hard to narrow it down and keep only the very, very special things, their baby stuffed animals and that they had when they were little babies that they loved so much and a couple of their other toys over the years. Now, my son was very happy and excited for me to give him his things. My daughter, not so much. She really wasn't excited to have to store the, her favorite couple of dolls and a few other things that I gave her. But once they reach adulthood, 
you can pass those things on to them and you don't have to store them any longer and then they can choose to do what they want to with them. I told her that it was fine with me and I would be perfectly, it was perfectly acceptable if she decided to pass those things on to someone else, if she didn't want to store them or keep them any longer. So then that burden was completely off of me. I was free of that burden about what worrying what would happen to those special keepsake things that I had saved all those years. However, I didn't keep a lot of things. I know a couple of people that are keeping some really, really large things and keeping an excessive amount of things, believing that their grandchildren will play with those things one day. And it could be very well true. However, I'm not sure if your children really want you to burden them with all of their toys from their childhood. Because let's remember, your grandchildren are going to have all of the toys of their own. They're going to be receiving gifts of their own for when they're born and on all of their birthdays and Christmas and other, you know, from other sets of grandparents. And you really don't want to burden your children with so many toys to completely fill their home when they have their own children. I, I really don't think that when my grandchildren are born that my children would be happy with me. They were perfectly fine with me giving the giving them the few toys that I had that were theirs when they were young. But I honestly, I know that they would not want me to bring a carload of toys that they played with as children because they'll want to go out and buy toys for their own children once they have them. So there really isn't a need or an expectation. They never expected me to keep all of the toys they had growing up and I'm so glad I didn't. We kept so many things for so long. And my husband was in the military for 30 years. So we moved quite a few times when my children were growing up. And we honestly just could not keep all of those things and keep packing them and moving them all the time. So pay attention to what your children like and what they really, really adore. And just only keep those special things. I did let my children have yard sales when they were growing up and I helped them set up and we put signs up and it was it was a lot of work but we had fun and I let them sell all of the extra toys and they got to price them and keep the money that they received from the toys and then they got to go buy new things and of course like with my son when he was older in place of the toys he bought video games and different things like that and my daughter was happy to buy some jewelry and she bought some home decor for, to decorate her bedroom and different things like that. So that was really fun. And that that's an idea of something you can do. And another idea that would be really great, if you really are not in an area where yard sales are conducive, maybe you could give your kids a little bit of money and you could say, I'm going to offer you a certain amount of money, may, maybe say $5 or $10 or whatever you decide for everything that you don't play with anymore and perhaps give them a large cardboard box and say everything that you don't enjoy playing with anymore or anything that you don't really you know like to have in your room or if you feel like you've outgrown this or that maybe you can put those things in a box and say I will give you this amount of money for the entire box. Once you fill the box I'll give you this amount of money and then we'll take it to the donation center and let somebody else have it that can really enjoy these things or really want to play with these. And that's a great incentive too, to help your kids put everything in there and want to, and it'll really clean up the room. And then once you take the box out, maybe you sit down and have, teach them, maybe go over some different ways to organize things and, or where you would expect them to put things because our kids really don't know where we want these things to go. If you would like some of the larger toys in the closet, for instance, and smaller ones in the toy box, or if you have a bookshelf and you tell them you want certain toys to be put on the shelf, show them, actually physically show them, or maybe put a little card on there that says a little, you know, like a little tag or something and says books or, or you know, toy foods or whatever they have and uh, toy cars go on this shelf and put a picture of it or if they're old enough to read just label the things and that way when it's time for them to pick up they'll know exactly where everything goes so unless they really have an idea of where you expect everything to be put away 
it's it's just so overwhelming and they don't have the organizing skills to do it. So that's just a really helpful way to get everything put away. And if you're not at the point where you feel comfortable getting rid of their toys or you just real really feel uncertain about it or you just have a hard time parting with them, maybe just pick up some of the toys, put half of them away, box them up, put them in totes, whatever you need to do. Just put those toys away and put them out of sight. And then when they get tired of the toys that they currently have or that they're playing with, then just take those toys and trade them out. Give them something new to play with and put the other ones away. And they'll be, uh, trust me, I've done this before. And my kids were just as excited with the toys that they used to have, even though they they had, had known that they were their toys already. They were just as excited when I rotated them out and brought out the toys and, that they had. And the first thing they said was, I forgot about this. I forgot we had this. I forgot I owned this. And so then I put all those toys back out, put the other ones away. And it's just like having all new toys again. So that works out really, really well. So I really hope that these ideas were helpful and these suggestions may work for you in some way. As a mother of two grown adult kids who has dealt with many, many hundreds of toys over the years, these things really worked well for us and they I hope they work good for you too. So I would love for you to like, share, and subscribe and ring the bell so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos.